Okay, hi. Now, in this video, we're going to have a look at Darwin's theory of natural selection in a bit more detail. So, if you're not familiar with the basics of the theories of evolution, please have a look at my previous video where I cover that topic. But now we're going to go into a bit more detail about what the theory involves. Now, of course, the theory was suggested by Charles Darwin, and this was a long time ago. We're talking around about 150, 160 years ago. Okay, so Charles Darwin suggested it. And a common phrase I'm sure you've heard of is survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. Now this is basically at the core of his theory. Now so in a bit more detail, organisms are always in competition with each other. So organisms exist in competition with each other with each other. Now what we actually mean by this is it doesn't matter whether you're an animal or a plant or bacteria or whatever, there are always going to be other organisms which are competing with you for the things you need to survive. For example, this could include food. Okay, there is a finite amount of food, it doesn't matter what you eat. For example, if you are a predator and you eat rabbits, there is a finite amount of rabbits. So if something else is trying to eat those rabbits as well, then you're going to have to compete for them. Also, you could be competing for, oops, there we go. You could be competing for territory. So territory. Most organisms need somewhere to live um, and especially need somewhere to reproduce. And obviously there is a finite amount of space and therefore organisms will be competing for this as well. They also compete with each other, so of the same species, for a mate. And so they will also compete for a mate. Okay, for example, there is going to be a finite amount of females. And the males obviously want to reproduce with the females and therefore carry on their line of genetics, so their family line. Can work the other way around as well. Sometimes it's the female that works to... Um, find a male partner but a lot of the time in nature it is males who are competing more fiercely for females now it's similar to food but we're also obviously competing for water okay almost everything on the planet needs water to survive if you're a plant you are also competing for things like sunlight okay that might sound a bit silly because you know, the sun is almost a never-ending supply of energy. We say it's a, re a renewable source of energy, uh, solar energy. But, for example, if a tree is casting a big shadow, then there will be other plants in that shadow who are not getting any of that sunlight. So this is also something that will be competed for. And so that's all good stuff. That's probably stuff you've seen um, previously in my video on competition. But why is this important? Because if, for example... Let's say um, we develop sharper teeth. It might be the fox going after the rabbit and it develops sharper teeth. This means it's more likely to be able to um, kill its prey and catch its prey more effectively. Okay, Because if your teeth aren't very sharp, there is a chance that you could drop your food and so on, it will run away. So sharper teeth might lead to an advantage. Now, if you're a plant, maybe taller stem. A taller stem means you are now at an advantage over the other plants because you've got first dibs on the sunlight. Okay, so those are things which can become an advantage. Now if you pause the video, I'm sure you could come up with something which would give you an advantage to find a mate, uh, maybe to find more water and to find better territory. But let's move on because all of those advantages Okay, they may be caused by mutation. Okay, mutation. So that's very important. Um, for example, a fox is not just going to choose to have sharper teeth. Okay, same token, a tree or even any other green plant is not going to choose to just become taller. Okay, something has to happen to allow that. And that is mutation. So mutation is where your genes are actually altered. So genes change. 
Okay, for example, you might have a gene which allows, if you're a tree this is, that allows you to be 10 meters tall. If that gene changes and then it means that you are now allowed to be 15 meters tall, that means that the tree can grow to 15 meters. Importantly, these mutations often don't show up until that um, organism has reproduced. For example, if a human being mutated, so a human being has brown eyes and it mutates to only have blue eyes, the human is not going to actually have blue eyes from then. It will remain brown, but the offspring of that human being can have blue eyes, okay? It will take those mutated genes from its parent. Now that's a bad and unrealistic example, but it gives you an idea that the genes are passed on. So when the genes are passed on, so passed to offspring, then the offspring are going to have that new characteristic. So that equals new characteristic. And it could be a characteristic which is completely new, like being resistant to a certain disease, because that's either a yes or no, or it could be an improved characteristic, like being a taller plant. Okay, and so that is mutation. Now, how does that lead to natural selection? Well, it's quite simple. If we had a group of plants, let's say you've got these generic just plants, and they look like this, okay? So they're reasonably small plants, okay? But they are green plants, and they do need sunlight. So they need sunlight. Okay, they're all going to be competing for that sunlight. Now, what happens if, let's say, this plant here mutates, so mutates to become taller? So what happens is its genes mutate and it now has a gene allowing it to become taller. Well, that is going to show up in the offspring because if these plants reproduce, you now have the offspring, which might look something like this. So these ones look similar to their parents, okay? But look, this taller one has become way taller than the rest of them. That's because it has that new gene. It has an improved or a new characteristic. Now, in the case of sunlight, this plant is going to have first dibs on all the sunlight. And so the plants around this plant are going to die because they don't obtain sunlight, which means they can't photosynthesize, and photosynthesis provides plants with food. And so this plant is going to have loads of food, it's going to reproduce and form more of them. So a new generation of these tall plants will form. Okay, The rest of the plants are not going to reproduce very effectively. So these plants, whoops, sorry, these plants okay, cannot reproduce. Obviously, some of them might be able to, but nowhere near as effectively as the tall plant. And that's because they can't obtain uh, the sunlight and therefore the food that they need. And so they're not going to reproduce. And in this new round of offspring, we have basically a new kind of plant. And so if that keeps on going and keep on going through generation, eventually the small plants are going to be completely wiped out by these tall plants. That is what we call evolution, because these plants are now very different to what they were when they started up here at the top. They might even be a new species, and also they have adapted to survive, okay? The fittest plants, in this case the fittest means the best adapted to obtain sunlight, have survived. So these ones are the fittest, okay, and that is why the um, term survival of the fittest is used. Okay, so there are loads of examples in nature where this has happened. Um, new species are constantly being discovered, and they may not have existed thousands of years ago. That's because the environment is always changing, and so natural selection is always coming into play. Okay, so I'm going to finish with a question. So pause the video. So pause the video and try and explain how natural selection could have led to long necks in giraffes. Okay, so have a think about that now. 
Okay, so I hope you had a go. Now, what could have happened to the draft is something like this. Apologies for the awful drawing here. Okay, so this is meant to be a giraffe. Now, giraffes, as we know, they like to feed on leaves. And so this giraffe is happy walking over here to this tree and yum yum, feeding on the leaves of that tree. Now, over time, though, what's going to happen is we have many giraffes and they all want to be feeding on the same thing, okay? So what we have now is competition. So now you see we've got more than one giraffe all feeding on the same thing. And now what's happened is that the leaves which were lower down on the tree have all been eaten. And so all the leaves here are higher up. This is a simplification, so don't worry about that, but it does demonstrate the point. So now what we have is what is known as a selective pressure. So selective pressure equals the height of the leaves. And so that by that I mean how high they are above the ground. Now it's going to be quite hard for these giraffes now to actually um, be able to feed properly. But what if one of the giraffes mutates so as to have a longer neck? Okay, the rest of its body here looks like it's bigger as well, but let's just pretend it's not. It's just the neck. Well, this giraffe walks over, and look, he can reach the leaves. The rest of them can't, but this one can, so he's a very happy giraffe. Okay, the other giraffes, these guys, are actually going to die out because they can't obtain their food. So these giraffes cannot obtain their food, and so they die. So these ones have died, and so that means that having been deleted, only the big giraffe is left to reproduce. So this one has also died. So this guy reproduces, so reproduces, sorry for the bad handwriting, and that reforms more giraffes with long necks. So the fact that his DNA has changed to enable this long neck, okay, has meant that he has a advantage or an advantage, okay, as a result of that selective pressure. That advantage has allowed this giraffe to survive because it can still eat more leaves and reproduce and because those genes which gave him a longer neck are passed on to his offspring, the offspring of this giraffe will also likely have these long necks. And the giraffes originally which had the shorter necks will be dying out. And that is how uh, natural selection has selected for the giraffes with the long necks. Okay, so I hope that helps explain things. I'm sorry for the bad drawings, of course. But if you do have any questions on that, please do feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.